This class is on the topic of traits and the traits approach to leadership. This approach was one of the earliest approaches used for studying leadership. Uh, it followed the idea that leaders are born and not made, which was dubbed the great person theory. Now, I'm going to stop here for a second and just think about this. Um, we are made up from two influences. This is a commonly held view in, in psychology. We're made up from two influences. One is what we call nature, our nature, and our nature was given to us when we were born. We inherited from our, mostly from our grandparents apparently, but we inherited. We, we, that's what we were given. The second part is nurture. This is the uh, collection of experiences um, school, college, university, the books we read, where we travelled, our friends, what was on television. So all of these are influences as well. These are nurture influences. And the outcome of the amalgam of those two, putting the two of them together, gives us us. This is what we are. Now what the traits approach is trying to do is to separate out traits and it's not just emphasizing as we'll see later the inherited qualities but also long-term influences long-term influences uh, behavioral patterns which have been with us for many years which becomes one of our traits so it's not just limited to what we're inherited with but it's certainly anything which is long-term The theory assumes that leadership consists of certain inherited characteristics or personality traits which distinguish leaders from other followers. So the leaders have certain qualities which make them leaders. And not anybody can be a leader, you have to have these qualities. That's the view. Now these various extraordinary abilities, many writers have talked about them and there would be such things as a tireless energy they can go and go and go. They're very enthusiastic and they just work continuously to achieve their objective. They've got a penetrating intuition. They are uh, have the ability, I should say, to see things perhaps that we can't see. They're able to feel what's going to happen or or what's the situation or they can they have a feeling for about the whole the whole process, whatever the process is, and the rest of us don't have that because we're not leaders perhaps. They've also got an uncanny foresight. They're able to see things, imagine things that are happening in the future and are able to try and sidestep it if it's bad and perhaps embrace it if it's good. But they have an ability to see or to imagine what is likely to happen and to follow that route. They've also got an irresistible, persuasive uh, set of powers. Uh, they must have. They've got followers. They must have persuaded the followers that they were worth following. Now, uh, Levecki um, in 1998 provides some interesting insights into understanding traits. These are skills which are the, the, the qualities that any manager can learn. So this is one set of ideas. Skills that any manager can learn. As long as, of course, the, the manager has the aptitude to learn the skills. So, for example, team skills, planning, understanding accounts. These are skills. Traits are a result from training. These are based on habit or inherited or received genetic qualities. For example, intelligence, equanimity, if you like, calmness, decency, energy. So traits are much deeper, long run. Skills, much more superficial if you like, much more on the surface and much more short term. 
Characteristics of deep rooted qualities and values which define actions and styles of high quality leaders, for example, moral fibre, courage, determination to succeed, capacity to inspire. So there is also associated with this uh, trait behaviour, there are deep qualities and values, deep rooted inside the person. Perhaps they've been acquired over many, many years and which are similar to what we've inherited because they're so deep-rooted. What we've inherited is very deep-rooted. These ones can be deep-rooted. So we have got this second set. Now, the difference between skills and traits being that skills are taught but traits are a result of experiences. Now, Levecki goes on to discuss this. Well, We've got two sets here, two sets of ideas. Traits are a result of experience and we've got the, the this idea that skills are taught. And he goes on to discuss the difference between personality and character. Because one tends to be more superficial and the other one tends to be more uh, deep-rooted. So we've got skills and we've got this. So now what we've got is a, a very important but long definition. Please stop the video if any time if you wish and make your own notes here. It's a good idea actually to stop it and, and just write down what's on the screen because these are important bits and pieces worth having in your notes. So personality is the more superficial manifestation of habits and surface behaviour. Um, so we know what personality is. It's more superficial. It's a more superficial form of habits and surface behaviour. Um, character is a much more profound composition of the inner person. Now, it is composed of what people deeply believe. So character is composed of what people deeply believe, their most strongly held life values, because it is based on the most important influences in their lives. It represents the qualities which govern how they take decisions about important issues. So character much deeper, much more ingrained, personality much more superficial. What a leader does for an organization is much more a reflection of their character than their personality because it's about the long term rather than the short term. So it's it's almost a time dimension mention. If I go back to the previous slide, character is much more profound composition of the inner person. It's much more long term. Personality, much more superficial, much more on the surface. So hence the Vecchi is drawn to this statement here. That personality, um, that their character is, is much more long term and their personality is much more short term. Now, many studies were conducted in the 1930s and 40s attempting to discover what were the qualities that guarantee leadership. But despite the massive research effort they all failed. So we're really talking about a failed theory here but for completeness it's something we must do. To understand leadership we must treat this class, we must consider this class, it's important. But in fact there is no evidence for it having worked. But we need to know why it doesn't work and, and what it was. Jennings is very pessimistic. He said 50 years of study have failed to produce one personality trait or set of qualities that can be used to discriminate between leaders and non-leaders. So, pretty bad. The thing has, there's no, there's no evidence of personality traits that is indicative of a leader. Discovered, um, Scott uh, Stotgill discovered uh, that the average person occupying a position of leadership exceeded the average number of the group in characteristics such as intelligence, scholarship, dependability in exercise and responsibility, originality, social 
participation and socioeconomic status. So there is some evidence to say that leaders are different because of those. But there isn't one killer characteristic, killer trait that we can say that trait must be present for people to be leaders. So that doesn't work. But we are much more sophisticated, we are much more uh, fluid in the way we develop. We develop differently. Uh, so it's it's probably quite um, quite relaxing and quite can feel quite good about the fact that we're not predictable. We're not machines. We are humans. Um, lots of people now do not believe in the great man theory. For example, um, Benison and Nanus, they state that leadership seems to be the marshalling of skills possessed by a majority but used by a minority. But it's something that can be learned by anyone, taught to everyone and denied to no one. So we can, according to this view, we can train leaders. Levecki supports the trait view, however, uh, in his book The Leadership Gene. So we have got two sides of an argument here. If we can skip back to the previous slide for a second. Leadership seems to be marshalling skills possessed by the majority but used by a minority. It's not something that can be, uh, but it, it's something that can be learned by anyone. It is something that can be learned. So according to that view, it can be learned. That means it's the it's the nurture thing. It's a nurture characteristic. Whereas Levecki is saying here that perhaps it is something that's born with you. He's back to full-blown trait theory again. He says, I have become convinced that almost all good leaders are born with a special talent which is modified as they develop as children. Well, that's trait theory full as we had it in the opening slides. He offered four major nurt nurturing influences. So this this idea of trait theory is not necessarily it's genetic. As I said, it's a characteristic. It's deep-rooted and if we develop it over our lifetime it becomes one of our traits. And the major nurturing influences here, according to Levecki, would be things like an unusually dominant mother. Uh, people who have unusually dominant mothers can develop into leaders. Being the eldest child in the family, he said, is important. That might be an indicator who's going to become a leader. Having a father who achieved high levels of success and who manages to make his child like him. So there's a whole family influence here. And also, it can be nurtured by teachers, by being chosen by the teachers, uh, by being picked out. So that's a possibility. So overall, we've got a debate here. A debate between our leaders born are the maid. The last bit, Levecki is suggesting that they are born, but they have, they're more than likely to be the result of some of these four factors we've got on the slide. Um, other people have suggested they cannot be born, they are in fact um, trained, or they can be trained. And the upshot of all of this discussion is that the jury is out. We don't know. The evidence over the years has been inconclusive. So there is no definitive statement at the end. It does take us into a very interesting area in psychology, more than anything else. But there is no solution. And on that interesting note, we conclude our talk. So, thank you for watching.